Hey guys, how are you doing? I have just rolled in from Fred's shop in Malibu, so it's time for a minute with Fred. Now, sometimes on a minute with Fred, you're gonna see really incredible guitars, you're gonna see earth shattering stuff, and then every once in a while there's some pretty simple stuff that holds some valuable life lessons. I'm sitting here holding my uh, templates for different pit guards that I have or will need or have run across and then there's a few original ones here that are pretty hard to run across especially when you really need them but today's lesson from Fred is about that's right pit guards especially on expensive guitars and Fred's going to give you a couple tips. The first one I want to tell you about is you, if you are taking a razor knife and you are tracing around a pit guard that's glued to the top of a flat top or you are tracing around a bridge that is glued to the top of a flat top, you want to rethink life because what you're basically doing, especially on a spruce top guitar, is you are cutting the fibers and you're creating a tear on the dotted line. So, I cannot give you the butt chewing that you could get from Fred when he can give it to you firsthand. So, let's go see what Fred's working on. And I'm glad I turned on the camera so I could share this one with you. See what I'm up to here. This is my uh, friend David White's guitar, and he has kept it in incredible condition. Um, we're going to look up his serial number, uh, but not right away. It's not important, except during the period that the, this guitar was made, they used a phenomenally high caliber glue. It's not this glue that we're seeing on here. This is glue rather le uh, uh, left uh, uh, that's on here after taking off a very ugly big guard. See this big guard? The guitar originally had a big guard like this. But the guy who, uh, he calls himself a luthier, once again, I think. A lot of luthiers should think about becoming Presbyterians or something, you know. But anyway, this on this so-called luthier, you know, it's like leaving the monkeys in charge of the bananas. Uh, decided that uh, he was going to make a big card to do what? Well, for starters, to cover a multitude of sins. Plus, he covers something that you don't really want to cover. Um, these ears, they used an incredibly good glue onto the pick card. So what happened was the glue in the pick card became this island of absolute no movement. And the top went, well, I want to move and shrink and do all these other things. But the glue under this pick card it's not working on me. So lo and behold, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a crack to relieve the tension. So this has a crack that's on the high E-string side running from the edge of the pickguard down to the bridge. This guy, I can only assume, was trying to cover that crack, which is stupid. Because the crack is the crack. And the guitar, if I saw a guitar of this year without a curled pick card or a cracked pick card. I would be amazed. It's okay, and all these guitars are incredibly good. I mean, you know, people go, oh, you know, the Martins made in the 70s with the East Indian and oh, yeah, right, well, try this guitar, it sounds great, and that's what it's about, right? Anyway, so what I'm doing now is I'm getting, I took off the pick guard, that ugly thing, and I've been very carefully getting rid of this glue. Now, I use a potion that I don't want to talk about because, once again, 
you could be one of those guys sitting in the basement in their socks going to the internet to find out about guitar repair. Which is like leaving with monkeys in charge of the bananas. So I'm not going to tell you what I'm using as my potion. But I will tell you that I, I have trust in getting rid of this glue with a great deal of humility. Which is the way all people should work on all guitars. It's to understand that they are nothing compared to the high quality people that made this guitar. I, uh, by the way, I tried all my potions in the middle of the pick card where it wouldn't, uh, you know, be detrimental to the finish outside of the pick card. And uh, I think I figured out a protocol how to deal with this. But let's have some fun over here in this ugly area. Let's take a look over here. That is some ugly stuff going on. And there's a number of reasons. One of the reasons is, is he had an abundance of glue when he put on the pick card uh, to cover up wood that he had chipped out while taking off the original pick card to then replace it. <laughs> it's just one of these things where, you know, he, as we say in the South, bless his heart. But anyway, let's go after that. Now, my friend Ken asked, uh, you know, what would it be like if we left this potion on longer than, let's say, 30 seconds? So, we're going to find out. I'm be really careful with my scraper, otherwise known as a safety razor blade. Let's see how we do. Yeah, baby, this is what we got going. So it's kind of, you know, the glue went into emulsion and there it is. to, you know, do this with great uh, purpose and not be in a hurry. Oh, I can see this glue here, but I'm not going to go after it right now. I'm just going to keep going here. And uh, in the process, I'll, I'm, I'm bound to learn something more about the glue. So before I go on to this guy's top, which, uh, you know, I'll know enough by the time I get around and get all this cleaned up so that I, I won't feel uh, at all uh, intimidated by what I don't know, which is 
you know, a lot. I don't know a lot. I'm holding my secret potion over the sound hole because there's no lacquer in case I become clumsy. is whether you're taking off a pick guard like a Martin pick guard or I'll tell you the one where I get a lot of big you know horrible problems is when somebody die, tries to take those inexpensive clear plastic pick guards off of their guitar and they've gone to so and so's guitar shop and the guy's going, oh, you know, it's a, it's got a double back of these, and you just put it on, and, you know, you take a spoon, and you make sure the bubbles go out to the side. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's easy. Well, then they go, well, you know, I don't want it anymore. I, I don't think I want it. So they start to pull it up. And what do they do? They just keep pulling, and pretty soon they're pulling wood and lacquer and everything else. And it's horrible, you know. With a Martin Picard, you know, the big deal is they, they, uh, you know, there is no lacquer under the Picard to pull up. They, they're very good about that. They put on the Picard before it gets lacquered. And never removing a Picard, there's no bad thing about heating it. And you can use a hair dryer if you don't have the money for a heat shrink gun. But you always put your finger in the way of what you're eating. So that, you know, your finger will say, Oh, you're too close and you're burning me. Okay, well, I'm probably doing the same to the pick art, so stop it. Anyway, so... Um, I'm going to keep going because I don't want that to stay on there too long. You're on. Oh, by the way, this episode is brought to you by Clinix. The throw away disposable tissue. All right, guys. I think you learned something in there. Uh, one of the takeaways that I see when I'm um, watching it happen is that Fred will tell you if you're working on something that has been underneath a pit guard, start in the center there and see what's happening. Don't go out to the edge and see what, you know, glue dissolver or whatever you're going to use to get a mistake like what you see Fred working on it. Don't start there. Start where things are hidden. Um, next, see what the work is doing. Don't get in a hurry. That razor blade is your best friend and when it starts pulling up that whatever the adhesive was, it's starting to pull it up like snot, you're getting somewhere. Pay attention to how long you're leaving whatever your secret concoction is to pull this up. Pay attention to how long you're leaving it on there and what it's doing. Make, maybe make a few notes as to the model of the guitar and what you're likely to run across. Listen, it's no surprise that some Martins and some Gibsons, certain models are infamous for when the pit guard starts to shrink, it pulls the wood with it and things start to crack. So don't let that be a surprise to you. The big takeaway here is you, you know that I started off with, with stuff that I made myself. You know that the guitars that I work on, I typically own. And as my guitars get better and my skill set gets better, I'm not out there doing first take stuff on someone's expensive guitar, so pay attention to that. It's always my pleasure to share my time with Fred with you. Give me a comment below and I will see you soon.